All right, so before you get started uh, with the install, um, first just feel your shifter. Um, notice uh, when you pull really hard, it's gonna uh, work its way over to the left. You might feel like it gets a little hung up in that reverse track. Um, so that's the thing that this is gonna take away. Um, and you're gonna get a much uh, more solid feel when you hit the ends of, thing, of the uh, shifter base. All right, so first make sure you have your parking brake on. Um, because you're going to be in neutral. Uh, <clears throat> first, we need to get the shroud off of here. Um, so there's two things. This can't come off without this piece first coming off, um, but we can get this started. So I prefer to just kind of get it broken loose and then to pull this off. Um, so you can just put your fingers in here underneath and kind of pull up, and it's going to pop up. Um, you have two options for getting uh, this off. You can go from the bottom to kind of get this boot off. There's actually, there's kind of four little clips. One, two, three, four on the bottom. Um, I found, and uh, don't sue me if you rip your <laughs> shifter. It's, <laughs> do this at your own risk. But you can kind of get the, the plastic here um, that's underneath this. And you can kind of push over right in that corner. And then it, you can kind of pull it up and it gets loose from the top. Um, this helps a lot with getting uh, the at the wires at the bottom. Um, so then you've got to pull this out. You, if you feel underneath with your hand fingers, you'll feel a couple of like little holes that you can kind of help to pull on. So pull forward at those. Sometimes you do have to put give a little bit of force to the top of the button just to kind of keep it in line, but it pops out pretty easy usually. Um, <clears throat> then once that's out, um, you're gonna pull this forward. You can see there's some little hooks here that were kind of tucked in behind this. And then once you have this pulled forward, I like to just put this back in because it keeps it out of the way. All right, and now um, if you still have your boot attached, you decided not to do it the risky way, um, you can go underneath here with some screwdrivers and hit these four tabs to kind of get it loose. Um, and then you can turn it over and find these wires. Sometimes uh, you might have to undo the wires first. So it's just easy if you can get this out of the way early. So you've got uh, three clips here. Um, it's actually optional if you want to take these off or not. Um, you can just sit it here next to you the whole time. You do risk kind of scratching your trim up, so I like to just take it off and get it out of the way. But totally, totally up to you. Um, this one's a little bit small. All of these have some sort of tab that you push down on, and then uh, it just pulls out. This one's got a really small tab, so I just, just get a screwdriver on there. My finger is too big. Okay. So, one, two, three. Set that aside. You can see tab here, tab here, and tab here. That's very hard to get into. Okay, so now that you have that off, um, next we're just gonna wanna get this out of the way. Um, again, there is actually, you can do this technically without taking the boot off. Um, you kind of have to work the shifter plate up and over all the stuff. So again, optional if you want to do it or not. I did include a um, hose clamp, that's the word I'm looking for, uh, to put it back on. Um, so from the factory it has this uh, clip around it and it's going to be hard to see from the angle that the camera is at unfortunately, but basically right here this clip, you have to cut it, there's another way to get it off, um, or you kind of just pull on it with a set of pliers in this area. Once you get that off, it releases the tension on the friction area, and you can just pull up and the shifter comes off. So you can see here, this friction area is kind of is held on uh, here. So this clamps down on the friction. Okay, and then we need to get the uh, cigarette lighter ashtray out of the way. Um, so this is an eight millimeter. There's two screws, two bolts. Set these aside. Out. It just barely clears under this thing. Um, 
there's a plug in some wires on the back, but this is long enough, I usually just set it down here on the side. All right, so now, uh, make sure you do not pull this boot off. You don't need to. Um, you don't need to separate them because they're a pain in the butt to put back together. So uh, the only thing that you need to do here, and I'll probably take some pictures to show this, but there is a little tab down on the side, and uh, I can show you on the, on the JXB plate. These little barbs that are sticking out, there's these little things that come down and go around them. So all you need to do is push the little things away and up. And so you'll see them, and you just get a screwdriver in here, or a pick or whatever, it needs a little bit of force. And you come at them from an angle going across the car, you push out and then up, and they clear the tabs. I'll show you in a sec what it looks like. And then once they've cleared the tabs, this back part of it is loose, and the front is just tucked underneath these, these tabs. So we just need to pull back on it a little bit. And then up, and now this should all come off as one unit. There's three pieces here. Don't separate them. It really sucks to put back together. So now you're into the shifter. So now it, this is where I love to just look at how much play your OEM shifter has. So you've got some wiggling here. Um, up and down, you can see down in here, you'll see the sliders kind of moving. Um, and then when you really uh, go over, you can see the whole plate will be flexing. So that's what we're trying to stop. Um, all right, so next we need to undo our linkage. It's easiest to do while it's up high still. Um, so this is a T45. You're gonna need a um, pretty long extension on it to reach the bottom one. Um, so the top one here. Uh, you can mark it if you like. A lot of these uh, instructional videos will tell you to put a mark on it so that you get it back to the same place. I encourage you to not put it back in the same place because it's probably not the best place that it could be. Um, and we're going to go through ex some extensive detail on how to set your shift linkage correctly. Um, so anyways, this one's marked. I usually put it back. The I bet this is like kind of the one that never moves and then down below you have your actual linkage that's moving. So this is just kind of like your mounting bolt. So I usually put this one back to the same place which is right in the middle of the track. So if you do that, you're probably fine. So we're gonna remove this bolt and then the next one, which is the one that's deeper down and you're gonna have to put, well, <laughs> now that I undid it, this makes it a little harder but you can hold it in place, right? Um, you're gonna probably have to put it in like either neutral or in fourth to be able to see this other bolt and get good access at it. This down kind of below on the left, you'll see it. And you're just gonna loosen this. Usually it takes like a few turns and you'll feel it get real loose. And now basically what we've done is we're not clamping the, the moving linkage anymore, the one that actually goes into the transmission. Um, so now that this is done, you should be able to slide freely on the top bolt mounting plate or point and then the also on the bottom so you can slide the whole thing all around um, and now we're going to actually drop the plate where you'll still be hooked up to these um, as long as you haven't disconnected the plate these actually can't come out um, don't use power tools they're bad four bolts or four nuts rather Lost that one. Yep, three now. Uh, just a note. Have a magnet handy. <laughs> I'm really trying not to drop anything down into this hole. <laughs> it's really a pain to get it back. Um, if you're lucky, it'll drop down on the ground. If not, it'll be stuck on top of the heat shield and you'll have to be going under the car and rattling it around or something and trying to find it. All right, so now this plate will just drop out like this. So now we're totally free. Um, so now that the plate, it's on some, basically you, there's some sliders, right, which you'll you'll see on your OEM plate here. Um, and we basically, in order to get this shifter disconnected from the plate, we have to push the plate rearwards. Um, and in order to get enough clearance, you usually have to push the shifter kind of forwards in the hole. So push the shifter forwards, slide the plate rearwards, and it'll come free. And then you should be able to just kind of go up at an angle and pull it out. 
Um, if you have a short throw shifter in here, there this actually may be sitting higher, like the whole base might be sitting a little bit higher actually. Um, and this might be a little bit harder, you might have to weasel it around to get it out. Um, okay, so this is your stock plate. Look at this foam, terrible, flexible. Throw it out. All right, and then the other thing that we need to switch out while we're here is we need to replace the sliders. These sliders just pull out. Again, flexible and awful. Look at that, just pulled it apart. One on each side. And then uh, we're gonna put the new ones in. Your billet and sliders. Jay, we can pay you some uh, parking fees. No, you're fine. <laughs> You can keep it there all night. <laughs> <We're moving> <laughs> Neighbors are moving out. Having showing, so they keep parking their van in front of our house. All right, so you're going to snap these new ones in. And then your next step. Uh, at this point, you probably noticed that this linkage came disconnected. That's fine. Leave it. You don't want it hooked up yet. All right, you're going to get your new plate. The bolts that are closer together, that's the back of the car. Basically, you should be able to read the text. So you're going to go down in, front first. Might have to push the shifter forward again to get enough clearance for the back. And then a uh, little bit tiny, tiny bit tricky part is you got to line up the sliders. Man, it's dark down there. <laughs> Light helps. If you run a headlamp or something, it's really helpful. <laughs> or have a friend with a flashlight. Anyway, so you've pulled up your... Uh, shifter you've gotten the linkage back in there and then I like to just start the bolt right now it's easiest to do and then it won't come disconnected from you on accident um, so just start the bolt and that kind of holds it all together for now you don't need to get it in any spot yet I guess you're welcome to set it when I tighten it it doesn't really matter I'll just get that started and then you're just gonna pull up on the shifter and you're gonna line up all the uh, holes I just may have to work it around a little bit. There it is. And uh, start the nuts. Actually, I lost one of these nuts before, and uh, so I have a regular nut and a washer instead of the flange, flange head nut, which is kind of annoying. Don't tell my wife. It's her car. <laughs> All right, so get these started. I'm just about to just skip this one. All right, again, don't use power tools, they're bad. It's probably like, 10 foot pounds or something. <laughs> it's not structural. If it came loose, it would just be annoying. Um, all right, so now we're gonna actually set the linkage. Your mounting plate should be really solid now. Um, and so the first thing is we're just gonna set this, uh, the fixed linkage here. That was the first one that we removed. That just kind of holds the shifter base in place relative to the car, get that fairly tight. Um, and now we're gonna work on the bottom one. So, all right, this is where things get a little interesting. It's not hard once you understand how it works. Um, so hopefully you're in neutral right now. Uh, probably should have mentioned that earlier to get in neutral. If you're not, it's no big deal. You can work your way back to neutral. Um, but if you feel right now while well, you still have this bottom bolt loose, you're free to slide wherever you want on that linkage. So you're feeling like there's basically a square that you can trace here that is exactly the extents of the base. You have a, your shift lever is pivoting back and forth, right? And at the bottom, as you go to the left, it's hitting the wall of the shifter base on the right. <coughs> And then when you go to the right, this goes to the left, right, front goes to the back, etc., etc. So 
the easiest way to get this quickly and you can even do it on the first try sometimes is feel like the extents of this right you go left right left right down up down up and if you can get yourself in neutral if you're already in neutral and you get yourself centered you can you can get this thing pretty darn close on your first try so go to the left go to the right back to the left kind of pick your middle spot go forward backwards forward backwards and some people like to measure up to the dash you can do that um, I found you by the time you take that measurement you're screwing around a bunch and then you end up moving it a little bit while you're trying to do it and so I want once you tighten it up it tends to always see, seems to always move so I put the emphasis on get it somewhere and then do a couple of iterations while you're paying really careful attention to which way you're moving it um, and that'll get you dialed in so I'm just gonna I'll just kind of show you my method here make sure we're still recording yep okay so I've gotten kind of where I think the middle is here. Um, if you're in uh, the middle, you should be able to get this bolt. If you can't access this bolt, then there's probably an issue. You're probably not really in the right spot. Um, so we're gonna just tighten up the bolt as kind of our starting point here. And I'll do this a couple times to show you guys how to troubleshoot if it's not working right. Okay, so now we're, we're dialed in. Oh, so I was actually not in neutral. So, great, this is a good example. Um, so now, so I was basically here, and I'm like, ah, oh, crap, I can't move it around. So what's going on? So I push it forward. I was actually, I think I was in fourth or second, because um, now I'm in neutral. But if you notice my travel, I can get just a little bit out of it to the left, and I get a lot of it to the right. And so I think actually what's probably happening since you know, you're you're always gonna it's gonna naturally want to return to neutral. So um, this right now is between third and fourth gear. So I can I can just barely go up to third, and I can pretty easily get fourth. Um, feels like third is kind of like shorter of a throw to, up to third than down to fourth. So that means I'm probably off a little bit front to back, and then I can't get over to first gear at all. So I'm definitely off left to right. I got plenty of room to get over to fifth and sixth. And actually, fifth doesn't stay in. So yeah, I definitely am not in the middle fore aft. So this is where you need to analyze where you, what you're doing. So if you can't get far enough up, that means that you need to lock in the linkage when the shifter is farther back. And if you can't get far enough left, you need to lock it in when it's farther right. Because basically you're running out of travel going to the left. Um, as soon as you lock in this linkage, that's neutral basically. So if you're locking in your linkage and um, neutral is basically on the left side of the shift, uh, left side of the shifter here, obviously you're not going to be able to go left to get to first gear, right? So we need to start it more to the right. So let's do that first. So my preferred way here and you know is basically um, I'm gonna hold on to this thing really tight while I loosen it and then once you start feeling it to loosen up then you're gonna move it over um, now I have an interesting predicament here because I'm in neutral right now but because I didn't really do this very well the first time um, I can't actually access the bolt it's underneath the shifter um, so don't don't fret if that happens you can go back to fourth gear and we're just gonna kind of work our starting point over in fourth gear and then we'll come back to neutral and reevaluate everything once it's tightened up again so i'm going to hold it and actually it's kind of nice to adjust the linkage when it's in fourth because you have a, a really like firm grip on it it's not kind of out here floating in space you can actually kind of pull back on it right and hold it up against the the edge of the base base right so it's it's our limiting factor right now so i'm gonna do this in fourth and remember i need to get farther to the left Right, I don't have enough travel to the left. So in order to get more travel to the left, I need to move my starting position to the right. So I'm holding it back. I'm just getting a firm grip. I'm not putting like excessive force back or forwards or anything. I'm just kind of grounding it, right? So it can't really go anywhere once this thing gets loose. Okay, so now I feel it's loosened up. And you should be able to look down there and see that when you, you know, slide it forwards and backwards, that basically the little sleeve that hooks up to the linkage is moving forwards and backwards relative to the linkage 
So I'm gonna go a little bit to the right here because I need to get more left to travel. And then I'm gonna tighten it back up. Okay, so now I'm gonna go forward, now I'm in neutral. So now I have all sorts of travel over here. I've got a little bit of travel on the right. Um, let's see, I can just barely make it into fifth. Sixth is a little bit of a struggle here. So I've actually overshot. Um, you should be able to get into reverse in this configuration too. So I've overshot a little bit and you can even see like the, ang the angle of the shifter is kind of off. Um, and now it looks like uh, I'm just barely can't, uh, can't get at the bolt again. So I'm gonna go back down to fourth and I'm gonna move my shifter this time back to the left a little bit. This is the part that um, if you're measuring with a tape measure, it doesn't really help you because not only do you have to dial in the 4F movement of the shifter, you have to dial in the left, right. And I think um, that's not stated clearly enough in a lot of other tutorials. All right, so I'm coming back to the left. All right. Oh man, I've done it again. I'm going back to the right. Once you understand the concept of this, it's not a big deal if you're <laughs> going back and forth and back and forth. So I'm going back to the right. Oops, slid off of there. That's not helpful at all. And got the ratchet stuck. Are you kidding me? see if I'm anywhere where I thought it was. All right, I got fifth and sixth, third and fourth, first and second, no problem. Down into reverse. Now you can feel, if you really haul on this thing left to right, obviously don't push down because you'll definitely go into the reverse track over there. Um, you're really gonna feel that you can't get stuck in that reverse track anymore, which is awesome. Um, all right, so now I've got my left and right dialed in. Now I need to check out my fore aft. So it seems it's actually not bad right now. I can get into all, all the gears. You should feel that you kind of firmly get into the gears, like you get in and then it kind of settles a little bit past it. So you can feel a springiness. So if you're pushing forward at a certain point, it kind of takes over and pops you into the gear. Like over here, it's not, doesn't seem to be doing that quite as much as it is in the middle. And typically the ones that are on the edges, like uh, first and fifth, but specifically fifth and sixth seem to be the ones that kinda, they're a little bit more of a stretch for the shifter to get to for whatever reason. Um, so if I wanted, so let's say I don't feel like my engagement going to the fr front is good enough, that means I need to move the shifter back, right? So again, I'm gonna, I like fourth gear. Fourth gear is awesome because you get great access to this bolt. Um, so I'm gonna undo this while I'm holding it firmly. I definitely don't wanna change the angle now, right? Cause that, I've got the angle dialed in where I want. And now that it's loose, I'm just gonna pull it just a little bit back. You don't need much probably, at least with my situation right now. Now I got really good firm engagement into first. Second is great. Or first, second, third, fourth, fifth, six. And there shouldn't be any notchiness or anything at this point. Everything should feel really good if you're kind of centered left, right, and you're centered uh, four F. And now, so uh, one thing that I recommend, you don't actually, so if with your left and right, there's actually a little bit of wiggle room. You don't necessarily have to be like vertical. So I like to, set my shifter a little bit farther to the left and the reason for that is when you're when you're going like to the left you're basically you're gonna hit the wall a little bit earlier which is gonna keep you in the transmission a little bit farther away from the reverse track when you're in first or second um, so you should have less of a chance of potentially you know kind of feeling it and getting hung up in there um, obviously the plate is gonna help do wonders keeping you out of there because um, it's not going to allow you to travel any farther than the walls will allow um, but as an extra layer of security if you just set your shifter so that you just kind of 
you're a little bit you know biased towards being able to get into the gears on the right easier and a little bit less travel going to the left right so um, yeah that's uh, basically it you now that you've set your linkage so just as a recap if you need uh, more travel to the front, start the shifter farther back when you hook up the linkage. If you need more to the left, start it farther to the right, vice versa. If you know that, you really can't go wrong. Um, it's just going to take, you know, some iterations. Um, and one thing, if you have a short throw shifter already, this is a stock shifter. So um, with the stock shifter, the base is base, uh, pretty much limits you about when you write just getting into the gear. If you're in, uh, if you have a short throw shifter, because you have more movement of the linkage per your travel of your shift lever, um, you're actually going to find that you can get, you can have like a wider range of um, starting locations of the shifter because you don't hit the base as quickly. Because um, you basically, you're doing more work with the, the linkage itself. Um, so you could start it up a little bit farther, down a little farther. Um, left and right is still the same because it's just a rotation thing. It's, it's all about the angle. Um, but yeah, so that is that. Um, I'm actually, I know I said I start a little bit over to the left, but this is my wife's car, so I'm going to start it in the middle for her. We're going to just take, probably going to be taking this out anyways. So again, I want to go, I want a little bit more left travel, so I'm going to move this a little bit to the right. And then I'm going to lock it back in. And the nice thing is, it definitely in the old configuration, this would have been really easy to get stuck in that reverse track. And now that the mounting plate is here, it's it's basically letting our base be the real stopping point of it and not allowing it to flex anymore um, and change the angle of the shifter to allow you into the reverse track. So. Okay, so uh, we gotta put things back together. So your boot here, if you didn't disassemble it, great. It's gonna be easy. If you did disassemble it, I'm sorry. Uh, you basically, there's an outer boot and there's like an inner piece and there's a ring that attaches the two and good luck. So you're gonna put this down over, you're gonna slide it forward under the little tabs in the front and then you're just gonna push down on it in the back. You should hear two clicks. And then you can just put this down. I did forget to mention when I was taking it apart, you're also going to have a big piece of white foam in here. So I've taken that out of this car. It's kind of annoying and it rips. So nothing, uh, nothing real important. <laughs> just more sound deadening. Um, all right, so you've got that on. And now we're going to save the boot and the uh, top of the shifter, the knob, all the way until the end. Um, we really don't need to put them on just yet. Um, so our next step is going to be the cigarette lighter ashtray. I'm just going to slide that in there. It's kind of going to go under this just barely. Um, and then this guy needs to go on. Remember that this uh, piece kind of holds it. So you need to pull that out a little bit. Slide this on over it. I'm really sorry. Hook up, hook up the wires first. It's way easier to do <laughs> when not installed. Be careful here, you can scratch your trim really easy with this thing, just because of the length of the wires. You might want to put tape down or something. Now that you probably already scratched it. But... Alright, so just kind of push in there, and then just push straight down. Don't start your car on yourself. Good. Um, and then this guy just pushes right in. Uh, just make sure this is real centered. You can actually get it off somehow left to right and it doesn't push in quite right okay that's in there 
And then our last step, I actually don't have it with me, but um, I give you a hose clamp. Uh, you're gonna take the hose clamp and uh, you're gonna put it right here in this groove. Um, as basically loosen the hose clamp all the way and then tight it, tighten it just like a half a turn just so you're just barely grabbing it. Um, it's just barely long enough for it. Um, and then uh, you're gonna take this, make sure it's straight, push it down on, and then you're gonna tighten up the hose clamp and that's gonna provide that force on the friction surface. And then uh, you can just take this and push it down. And you're done. Enjoy.